everybody, and thank you for joining our 49th uh, uh, Tuesday Zoominar this morning. Um, you can continue, please, to drop in the chat where you are from, that we can see where you're from. Um, good morning, another one from the Netherlands. Nice to be, nice to have you here. Um, BSN provides you with practical, uh, good morning, BSN pr provides you with practical tools and insights to improve your skills in one of the four pillars of leadership, being responsible leadership, change leadership, decision-making leadership, and performance leadership, which we at BSN believe are crucial to make a difference. Something which you will be able to apply directly in your working life after the seminar. We will end the session sharp at 10.08 to allow you to have a break before getting started for your uh, Tuesday morning. Today's topic is cultivating responsible leadership, a collective journey which focuses on responsible leadership, gives us insight into what is responsible leadership and what does responsible leadership entail. Good Morning BSN is organized by the BSN Impact Center for Great Leadership. The center is an initiative of BSN generously founded by the Culture Factor Group and sponsored by the new energy company Chun Global. The Impact Center for Great Leadership is a place where BSN alumni and other managers and leaders from companies and society meet each up to share insights and to create new practical knowledge. You can also contact the Center for In-Company Programs and further grow the talent and teams within your organization. I'd like to introduce and welcome our speakers for today's session. Felix Zondi is an MBA candidate with a BSc degree in chemistry. He has many years of experience working in fast-paced commercial laboratories. He is also a quality manager expert with a diploma in total quality management. He is currently head of the Department of Water and Environmental Laboratory at Alfred H. Knight in Zambia. His role involves overseeing laboratory operations and ensuring compliance with environmental standards, contributing to the field through expert leadership and commitment to sustainable practices. Our reflector today is Prof. Bernie van Sal. Bernie is a visiting professor in Information and International Management at Business School Netherlands. He is also director of the National Institute for Development and Training. His extensive experience in international management positions him as a key educator and influencer guiding future leaders and professionals in navigating complex global business landscapes. So Felix, it's over to you now. Um, if you will please uh, do your presentation for us. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for that uh, beautiful introduction. Uh, let me just go ahead. Okay. Just setting up. In the meantime, I will just greet uh, Dr. Ogumo and Alfred, um, also from uh, Nigeria. Good morning to you. Thank you for logging on this morning, everybody. We have 37 participants, which is great. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, and... Uh... I think if you want to get your presentation live, you can pop it at the bottom. Yep. Okay, yes. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Over to you, Felix. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I think I won't dwell on so much on my introduction. I think uh, Janita has uh, done a beautiful, beautiful introduction. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Uh, um, so as she mentioned, we're looking at responsible leadership. And uh, my topic for today is cultivating responsible leadership, a collective journey. I think the key word there is collective. It's a collective journey. And to begin with, I thought I would look at um, a case study which happened in 19, uh, 1989, uh, 24th March. Uh, this happened in North America. And um, this incident is currently known as the Ishon Valdez oil spill. Um, I've listed out some three pictures there. A shows the ship that had an accident. 
and B shows what actually happened, you know, and C shows the effects, the environmental effects that had had that that had. So we see that uh, Ijon Valdez was a ship that was carrying oil from a place called Alaska, taking it somewhere else to Los Angeles, and uh, it hit an iceberg, and uh, that caused oil to leak through and. Uh, the oil leaked many kilometers away from where it, uh, the incident actually happened. And we can see the cleanup that happens in picture B after they notice the oil spill and the environmental problems that came up after the oil spill. What we notice from this particular accident is it was something that would have been avoided. This accident was something that would have been avoided we see at the center of the accident that the captain of the ship on that particular night, he wasn't in his right mind, okay? He was drunk. And as we know, he wasn't supposed to be drunk during um, duty, but then he was drunk. Since he was drunk, he decided to hand over the steering of the ship to a subordinate. Of course, the subordinate was a captain, but according to what we hear in history, the subordinate wasn't fully trained to handle that ship at that particular moment. Now, after that happened, we see that uh, the ship hit an iceberg and we have a leakage that caused this disaster. The lesson that we get from there is here's an individual who knows what he's supposed to do, but then because of negligence, he decides to hand over his responsibility to someone else. And that someone else actually is not well trained to actually perform that particular duty. And I think that's where now responsible leadership comes in. Responsible leadership, if we were to define it and understand it very well, we would see that such accidents when people are responsible can actually be mitigated such accidents cannot take place. Of course, probably accidents will always happen, but then they can actually be reduced because people are responsible. So this particular example is an example of a leader who is irresponsible. And that's where now we can define what responsible leadership is. So in my definition, responsible leadership is a strategic approach that aligns business practices with ethical principles, social responsibility, and environmental sustainability. This is a strategic approach that aligns itself with the business practices that are supposed to take place and allowing the business practices to work in ethical, with ethical principles, social responsibilities, and environmental sustainability being at the core of everything that is being done. It's a collective effort that requires commitment from individuals, teams, and organizations at all levels. In this definition for me, I'm taking responsible leadership as a mindset. I'm taking it as a mindset because it's something that everybody should have in the organization. Sometimes many lessons that we get from BSN especially, we might assume that they are meant for top management. We might assume that they are meant for the organization as a whole. Yes, it's for the whole organization, but it's actually critical to break down the organization and bring it to an individual level. So I'm defining responsible leadership as a mindset that characterized itself with a personal sense of responsibility. It's a mindset that characterizes itself with a personal sense of responsibility, a mindset that prioritizes lasting global change and a passion of building a better world. So it's, it's a mindset that every one of us can actually have it's a mindset that all of us should actually have. It's a collective effort, as I've put in my second point. It's a collective effort that requires commitment from individuals. 
individuals that end up making up teams, individuals that end up making organizations. So the core element of responsible leadership is actually ethical decision-making. It's actually social responsibility. It's actually environmental sustainability. And these three are known as the triple bottom line because they are the most responsible leadership is. Am I still on? Yeah, well, we can hear you. Just go ahead. We can All hear right, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I, I thought I should look at the power of collaboration in terms of... Uh, with the topic that we are looking at. You know, collaboration is essential for fostering responsible leadership because it involves individual commitment. You know, in collaboration, each individual that is taking part, you know, should actually have a commitment to make sure that they uphold ethical standards and have proactiveness in whatever they get to do. You know, proactive uh, decision-making, perhaps, proactive uh, behavior is something that in the example that I mentioned earlier was lacking when it comes to that uh, captain that I mentioned. Had he been proactive, he would have known that certain things should not be done while on duty. Of course, when it comes to the oil industry, um, they promised, uh, Ishan in that case promised that such accidents would uh, be one in one 10,000 trips. You know, they promised that such accidents might not occur. And of course they trained their personnel, but on that particular instance, proactiveness was not there. You know, the captain relaxed. The captain decided to delegate probably his duties to somebody else who at that point was not really, really trained to handle the responsibility. So I'm saying point number one, it's an individual commitment, you know, for people to be proactive in whatever they do. It's an individual commitment for people to uphold ethical standards. And when it comes to teams, collaboration is essential because teams will come together to address challenges. And where teams are, as I have learned from BSN, you know, we have um, action learning, you know, where teams are, you would find people become innovative. You know, they put their minds together. Where teams are, you know, if people could actually work together, that will promote a positive culture. You know, I think I've learned from BSN as well that when people are given a chance to express themselves, it just creates a, a certain environment for them to, to, to be free you know, uh, for them to actually think outside the box. So when people collaborate, we see that challenges can be addressed fast. You know, people become innovative. People, I mean, they develop a positive culture around them. Not only that, but collaboration in an organization, you know, it supports, uh, organization can, through collaboration, can support clear guidelines. You know, they can bring up trainings that, we impact lives, you know, and collaboration when it comes to organizations, it brings up accountability for that organization. A case study um, in my research, I found out that uh, Patagonia and Unilever are some of the top organizations that are actually spearheading responsible leadership in their in their day-to-day -day operations. You know, to support responsible leadership, these organizations have promoted environmental sustainability. You know, they have promoted environment, environmental sustainability initiatives where they talk about recycling, they talk about reusing materials, you know, they they they've just gone out, you know, to talk about initiatives that promote. Uh, environmental sustainability. These organizations have also promoted uh, a sense of social responsibility. 
they are promoting social responsibility programs. You know, they are there out there fighting for laws. They are fighting for fair labor laws. You know, they are fighting for community engagements. These organizations also are partnering with their stakeholders. You know, they are partnering through effective communications with suppliers, with NGOs, to see to it that an NGO's fight for probably human rights comes to, I mean, to fruition, you know. So from here for me, I'm gathering that the triple bottom line is being, you know, actualized by these two examples of organizations through the way they handle the kind of materials that they process. The first point is they look at recycling their materials. You know, these organizations are there promoting a social, I mean, uh, social responsibility programs. They are, they are fighting for a cause. You know, they are fighting for fair labor practices. They are fighting for human rights and they're there making sure that each and every part of the organization is engaged in a community service. You know, these organizations are there partnering with their stakeholders. I think stakeholder partnering is one of those important things that each organization needs to look at because when you partner with your stakeholders, you are actually giving them a voice in the way you operate. You are actually giving them a voice in a way that your organization is moving. And like I earlier said, when people are given a voice, they feel part of whatever is happening. They feel part of what the organization is doing. They might not be there to share the proceeds of the organizations, but then they are there feeling as if the what drives the organization is really their ideas. You know, they are there feeling part of what the organization is doing. You know, so the impact of collaboration when it comes to organizations, when it comes to us as individuals who are part of the organization, being responsible leaders, you know, the impact, my notes are collaboration can lead to a significant, you know, to significant benefits for the organization. This is number one, enhanced reputation and brand value. I think I've tackled uh, just a bit on this one. When you collaborate with your stakeholders, and by stakeholders, I shouldn't limit myself to external stakeholders like suppliers, like the environment in which the organization is, but then stakeholders could also be people that work for your organization. You know, when collaboration has been uh, put in place, Collaboration helps to enhance the reputation of the organization and your brand value because people will feel, people will have a sense of belonging. Your stakeholders will have a sense of belonging. Your employees will have a sense of belonging. Not only that, collaboration also improves employee morale and engagement. Just there, the sense of belonging. I feel... Nowadays, I, especially in, in, in the Western world, it's quite different for Africa, but in the Western world, we see people looking for employment, people joining organizations on the basis that the organizational pillars, the organizational beliefs, the organizational culture aligns with their own personal culture. In Africa, it's quite different because people are looking for employment to survive. You know, in other places, they would want to join a cause, you know. So now if people feel that they belong, you know, their morale, their engagement, they are engaged actually in whatever is being done because they feel they belong. They feel their choices, their say is actually being incorporated in whatever the organization is doing. Not only that, collaboration brings about positive community impact through social and environmental initiatives. 
um, I have learned through BSN because I'm, a, I'm I have a SaaS background, but on the business side, I have learned through BSN that actually corporate social responsibilities are important for your brand value. Corporate social responsibilities are important. So now, if an organization begins to collaborate with whatever the society is into around them, you know, it brings about positive impact like we are seeing, you know, and people will get to know that the organization actually exists. The organization exists and the organization is fighting for them. In Africa, I have seen in Zambia, organizations go to rural areas, they go and donate milli meal, they go and donate, you know, a corn meal, they go and donate foodstuffs, you know, and people get to know their organization through that. The organization might not be there in the rural area, but their impact is actually felt. Their positive impact in the community is actually felt. And well, the government gets to notice them as well. You know, not only that, but collaboration also brings about long-term financial sustainability by mitigating risks and building customer loyalty. Just like we're saying, you know, if people feel part of what the organization is doing, they'll buy in to the product that the organization is selling. You know, when they feel the organization is doing something to help, they'll buy in. Sometimes some organizations don't even have to market what they do, what, what, what they are selling their product, or they market is their corporate social responsibility and people get to know, oh, that's what the organization does. I'll make sure that I'll continue buying their product because of the collaboration that they have um, with the environment around them. Now, um, to conclude, there's a call to action for all of us. Like I said, it's not just uh, for the organization at large. Responsible leadership comes down to us as individuals. Individual action can actually contribute to responsible leadership. Number one, if you'd want to be a responsible leader, then make up your mind to act ethical each and every day. Be a mindful consumer if you want to save the environment. Be somebody who is clear when it comes to communication. Be somebody who wants to see the betterment of the environment around them. Be somebody who wants to see the betterment of others. You know, Be active in your participation when it comes to collaborative initiatives. Be a person who's actively involved in your community around you. Your organization might not be there yet, but you as an individual, you could actually be actively participating. Be proactive in problem solving, participate and address focused problems. The key word there is focused. You can always sit down, have a reflection every day and brainstorm of, on whatever problem that can occur if you were to make a decision. What problems would occur if I was to make this decision? If I was to head this route, what kind of problems will I find myself in? And how can I solve them? Those are focused problems. And lastly, together, we can create a more sustainable and ethical business through being a responsible leader. I think I'll, I'll end there. Thank you so much, Felix. Um, very insightful, um, lovely presentation. Um, we're going to hand over now to Prof. Bernie to reflect on, on your presentation. Bernie, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Renita. Uh, hi to everybody. And um, Felix, thank you for opening up this topic. Uh, I think we need much more time to speak about it than just a few minutes uh, because it's much more complex. I think, and um, we need much more time, I suppose. Um, before I start, I just want to say that I, I, I probably, uh, my thoughts is, is influenced by um, a number of, of, of uh, um, writers. Uh, the first one is Kitz de Vries, 
uh, a Belgian um, writer. Uh, he wrote a book, Leadership Mystique. And what is very interesting about Kitts is he was invited to a leadership conference and um, and he walked up to the stage and, and he said, um, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. And he walked off. And the people who organized the conference was absolutely, you know, all these people came from across the world to listen to Kits the Fries. And now he said, here we are. After tea time, they sort of convinced him just to say something more. And uh, he walked on the stage and he said, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again <laughs> and he walked off so obvious what kids was trying to say is we inclined to frame leadership in a lot of words and we package it for specific times like this topic of responsible leadership uh, other topics could also be transformational leadership um, at one stage, I was asked to write something about African leadership. Is there something like an African leadership, a European leadership, an American leadership? I'm also influenced by a Katzenbach book called Real Change Leaders, um, which is my passion, because I think leadership is all about activity and Felix, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you bring in the whole issue of, uh, of collaboration. Um, and I think communities is another C that needs to come into the equation. Uh, because within the digital economy, and that is my frame of mind at this stage, what is responsible leadership within the digital economy because we are in a new economic sort of realm. I, I, I found a nice book, Felix, I don't know if you picked it up somewhere, Responsible Leadership, Developing a Culture of Responsibility in an Uncertain World. It's by Tim Richardson. And I thought that is really what we need to talk about is the uncertainty. Obvious, we don't have the time to talk all about these things, but Katzenberg uh, on Real Change Leaders uh, focuses on a number of traits. And the same with the Center for Creative Leadership. I had the opportunity to study there and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, shouldn't we focus on traits rather than just a concept of leadership, and uh, I'm critical about it. Um, I'm quite aware of the fact that within the business science, we very often have a, a hype cycle of terminologies. And, and my question is, is responsible leadership just but an, an part of the hype cycle? What is next in terms of leadership? You know, if I think of 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 the real change leaders, they would say, "Who who is the real change leader? Is a visionary mindset, high emotional intelligence, adaptability, good communication skills, effective listening skills, strategic thinking, decisiveness, and resilience." <laughs> and then, if I go to CCL. And uh, that's the Center for Creative Leadership. And they have, through their research studies, identified a number of traits for leaders. And it's very much the same. Self-leadership, respect, compassion, vision, communication, uh, learning agility, collaboration, influence, integrity, courage, gratitude and resilience. Now, uh, yeah, as I said, gets their feet set. Here we are 
again, what is the difference? And I think what we need to do in the sense-making loop of the Center for Creative Leadership is what are the uncertainties? And maybe start there, go through a creative thought line of innovative thinking to create a shared understanding. But Felix, thank you very much for opening up this topic. I think uh, it is worthwhile a study. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that reflection, Bernie. Um, now I think what we will do is we'll open the floor for questions. Um, I already see one question from Iguano. He's asking um, for Felix. Um, Felix, what is meant by mindful consumer? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that question. Um, in light of this presentation, a mindful consumer is one who is concerned about the outcome of whatever they are doing or they are consuming in this case. Um, in light of an organization, if a, an organization is a mindful consumer, then they must think about what byproducts uh, what effects do those byproducts that they produce have on the environment, on the people around them, and on any other thing? So they are just mindful of whatever they take in, what effects do they have as a person? What effects does what you consume have? You buying polymer plastics, you, know, you buying paper bags, you using this particular product, what effects does it have on the environment? What effects does it have on the people around you? What effects does it have on you yourself? So in short, it's just being concerned about what your action really means somewhere else, what your action really means to you, what your action really means to the environment. You are mindful. Thanks, Felix. Felix, why don't you do me a favor and just put your camera on that that, uh, that the participants can see you. <laughs> ah, that's better. Thank you so much. Um, then I have a question to add on top of that one, if I could. Does that mean, uh, Felix, that as consumers, we can force organizations into a position of being responsible? Sorry? Sorry, I didn't get that. Okay, the question is... Uh -huh. it, you said you said about consumers, right? Mindful consumers. Mm -hmm. So if we had to stand together as mindful consumers, does that mean that consumers have the power to drive an organization to being responsible? I think the answer there is a definite yes. <laughs> it's an interesting concept. Organization is responsible, I think. In terms of collaboration, they really need to listen to the consumers. Uh, if anything, the consumers have the power to shut down a, an organization. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then I've got a question from uh, from Okori. He's asking, how can an employee buy shares of his or her company, looking at collaboration and boosting employee morale? I think that's more of a comment though than what it is a question. I don't know if you'd like to yeah. comment on that. They're saying, how can, which one? Where, where how can question? an employee buy shares of his or her company looking at collaboration and boosting employee morale? Hmm. Okay. Um, I'll try and uh, probably just comment on uh, boosting employee morale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Felix, we can't hear you. I, I think it's the network. Maybe Benny, Professor Benny can help. Okay, Benny, could you comment on that one? Yeah, well, once again, I'm going to comment um, with the background of, of digital economy. Um, you know, I think one of the most important issues for the economy today is collaboration and, and, and what value you create. 
uh, within your organization. So uh, there's two value systems. Um, we focus on the, the one is the unleashing of trap values and the other one is a new to the world value. And one of the, the unleashing of trap values is collaboration and building communities. And if there's no value for a community, I, 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 I cannot see that a company will survive. So uh, um, that is the future. And the concept I, I have um, sort of coined for this is collaboronomics, how through collaboration you could create an economy. So it is not an issue anymore of an 80-20 of an principle. Uh, if you share, you share. After cost, it's a 50-50%. Uh, so, and there's a lot of organizations, and I know in agriculture in South Africa, we're also promoting the share concept uh, within organizations, because then it belongs to them, and, and the whole mindset change, and, and, and you create a, a, a new culture of growth, and I think that is what we need within our organizations. I don't know if that that helps you very much. Okay, then, thank you, Bernie. Then we have a, a question from Victor. Um, Felix, if you can hear, you can keep perhaps your camera off, maybe that's what's slowing the network. Um, what is the relationship between corporate social responsibility with responsible leadership? What is the difference between the two? Felix, we still can't hear you. We don't have sound. Bernie, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, I don't think you can you can separate the two. Um, you know, responsible leadership and and the responsibility towards communities go hand in hand. And uh, and I think we need to create strategies uh, and to change. And if we want to create change within the African context, for instance, we need that. Okay. And then we have one last question that we can take before we close, because we're running a little bit late on a minute or two. In the course of attaining the real status of responsible leadership, there are many challenges between saying and real doing. How can one weather the storms without hurting others or causing any damage? Bernie, do you have uh, insight on that? <laughs> I think it's always a problem. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about everything. We've got good policies, but we never implement these policies. And, and, and even within organizations, we have good strategies, but we never really implement the strategy. So, and I think that is one of the departure points of this institution, BSN, is that we want to do theory in practice. And that is seriously important, is, is to focus on practice. Less talking, much more doing. Thank you so much, Bernie, appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank Felix and Bernie both for the insights today. Um, I got to learn quite a lot. Um, next week is Good Morning BSN's 50th webinar. So we keep an eye out for our special edition and join us to make an impact in great leadership. Um, thank you very much for attending everybody today. We're going to close off today. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Felix. Um, and thank you to all the attendees that took the time to join us today. Thanks so much and have a lovely day further. <laughs>